Today I'm going to walk you through the process of updating the firmware on the Cadex GM series of gimbals as well as the XF robot gimbal. The process is exactly the same for both. Now, the reason you may need to update the firmware on your gimbal is not only to get new features in the future, but Cadex users specifically have found that their head tracking on their Goggles L will not work with their gimbal until the gimbal has been updated to the latest firmware. Now, when you buy the gimbal, Cadex don't include the cable that you need to update the firmware, but don't worry, you don't actually have to go out and buy that if you don't have it. You can update this gimbal not only through Betaflight or iNav pass-through, but you can even do it with an FTD adapter as well. And what I'm going to do in today's video is walk you through three different methods. The first method is with the official adapter. The second method is via Betaflight or iNav pass-through. And the third method is with an FTD adapter. Now, now, quickly before we get into it, I just want to say if you do find this video useful, please to make sure you are subscribed. I do also have a full review on the Goggles L as well as some of these gimbals out there and I will put links to them below. Now the recommended way to update the firmware is with this little adapter that you see here. They don't actually include this with the gimbal unfortunately, although it is available to buy separately on the website. This comes with a small three pin cable attached and the firmware update port on this gimbal is this little port located on the side here. There are additional ports on the back but it is not those ones that you use, it is this one here and you simply take your cable and plug this into the port on the side of the gimbal making sure that it goes all the way in and then we would connect this side to a USB port on our computer. Now before you can connect to the computer you will need to make sure that the gimbal is powered up. I'm using just a slave harness here. You can tell that it is turned on because it is fighting me but it won't connect unless you do power the gimbal externally via the connector on the back. You will then need to go to the manufacturer's website and download the correct firmware for the gimbal. You can see up here, we've got the GM series manual. And then if we scroll down further, we should find firmware for the gimbal located down here. If your gimbal is made by one of the other manufacturers, simply go to their website and download that firmware package for your gimbal. Once downloaded inside, you will find a few files and a folder. You need to go in and navigate to this program here called Gimbal Config. This is what is going to allow you to do all the configuration on the gimbal as well as update the firmware. Once it opens, it should look something like this. What you then need to do is find your correct COM port. On mine, it is COM26. Click open and it should connect. And what you should then see is live data coming from the gimbal. So for instance, if I move the gimbal by hand, you can see that being moved on the screen. Under this software, it gives you various pieces of information. So we can download our parameters, upload parameters, save the parameters to a file. You've got some gain settings under here as well. And there are some more advanced settings available on other versions of this software as well that allow you to do a lot more configuration. On the Cadex version though, it is pretty much as you see it here today. Now to update the firmware on this gimbal is fairly straightforward. The first thing you want to do is check what firmware you actually have installed. It will show you the current version down here. I already have the latest version on this gimbal, but I can still update it again to demonstrate it for you here today. So to do the update, you need to close the port, click open firmware and you want to find the firmware file that was included with the download. In this file that I downloaded here, it's in this folder with the Chinese symbol and you're looking for a firmware file that ends in CAHF. That is the main firmware file and it shows the version number there. Once I've double clicked it, we then simply click start upgrade. You will see down here that it says entering firmware update mode and it will give you a progress bar along the bottom here of the firmware update and basically once it completes your firmware is updated and it should then work on the latest version and there we go that is the firmware update complete now the second method you can flash this if you don't have this adapter is via your flight controller now here i've got the gimbal connected up to one of the serial ports and the basics are we are going to flash this via the pass-through feature exactly the same as we would flash something like an express lrs receiver although you are going to need to do some manual commands in cli to put the flight controller into pass-through mode now this should work with both betaflight and inav and we'll take a look at that in a minute and the only 
only thing you're going to need to do is make yourself up a custom cable. So here I've got a cable into the update port and I've chosen to plug it into the digital ready port on this SkyStars flight controller. You can connect it to any UART you want. You could solder it on this side and plug it in on that side. It's not important. What is important is you know which UART you're connected to and you have the pinout correct. I will post up an image of the correct wiring for the gimbal on the screen as well. This is listed in the manual as well. But what you need to do is make sure you have ground to ground, TX to RX, RX to TX, exactly the same as you would with any Express LRS receiver. Then it's simply a case of powering everything up. I've currently got the gimbal turned on and I've connected the flight controller to USB. Once connected in beta flight, you simply hop into the CLI and we need to force the flight controller to enter pass through mode. Now there is a command to do this and it is basically serial pass through with the number of the UART and then the board rate. Now there is something you need to take into account here. You need to take one off whatever the UART is because that is the number that it is assigned to on the flight controller. So for instance, if you were doing this on UART 1, you would say serial pass through 0. If you were doing it on UART 6 as I am, you would say serial pass through 5. Then you need to set the board rate and I've set that to 115200. You type in that command, click enter, it will then put the flight controller into pass through mode and then you go up and you disconnect from the configurator. Then in the gimbal config app, make sure you select the correct COM port, click open port and you should then see it connect to the gimbal. You can now see if I move the gimbal by hand, it is moving on the screen and you now have the facility to perform any firmware updates, any configuration that you might want to do on the gimbal via your flight controller. You can update the firmware simply by adding the file down here as I showed earlier. For iNav users, the process is basically the same. You need to connect your flight controller to your gimbal, making sure that you have the UART wired correctly. You then need to go into your iNav configurator. And before we go down to the CLI, do make sure that under your ports tab, the serial port that you've got it connected to, and the one I'm using today is serial three or UART three, is not labeled Serial RX. In my testing, if Serial RX is turned on on the serial port that you're using for the gimbal, it will not connect. As long as you've made sure that's the case, the process is basically the same. You go down to the CLI, you then need to type in Serial Pass Through, again, taking one off the number, add the board rate, 115200, but on iNav, add in the extra, RX TX command, hit enter, it will then open that serial port into forwarding, disconnect from the iNav configurator, and then in the gimbal configurator, make sure you find your correct serial port, click open, and then you will see it is connected. Now, there is a third option that you can use, and that is something like this, an FTDI adapter. The process for this, again, is basically the same as it is for connecting to a flight controller. You're going to need to connect the gimbal to ground, TX and RX. And rather than using iNav or Betaflight Configurator, you are able to connect to the gimbal directly with their software. Find the correct COM port for the adapter, click open, and again it will connect just like it did on the other methods. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this one. As I've said already, if you can't get the head tracking working, make sure you update the firmware. As I've said, it is exactly the same for the XF robot as it is the CADEX. In fact, whilst I shouldn't tell you this, you can put the XF robot firmware on the CADEX and vice versa, although you shouldn't need to do that but it appears to be the case that they are basically identical gimbals. The configurators are very similar. I think there's just a basic version versus a, an advanced version. But overall, same gimbal, same firmware, and the process is identical for both. Anyway, if you found this video useful, please do let me know what you think below. If you have any questions, please do post them below as well, and I will try and answer them. Finally, I'd just like to say if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon. It is only through the support my patrons will be able to keep making content content on this channel and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep doing it in the future please do consider checking it out anyway that's it from me stay safe i will speak to you soon